Guys, don't forget to head on over to cartplug.com slash Dominic Rich FC. Use the coupon code Dominic Rich FC to get yourself one of these babies. Just do me a favor. If you never check the site out, please just head on over. All the links will be in the description box down below. Use the coupon code Dominic Rich FC to get yourself 20% off. It's hard to say it, but we are currently 25 points behind Liverpool and we are in second place. Not like we're in 10th. We are in second. Could you guys believe this? Oh, wow. Wow. I can't believe I came out of that unscathed. But what a season Liverpool are having, man. Unbelievable season. It's just simply ridiculous what they have done this season. 25 points ahead of my team, Manchester City. Liverpool, 76 points. Man City, 51 points. Second. Guys, this is unbelievable stuff. How is second place 25 points behind first place? And to make matters worse, we just got banned for two seasons pending an appeal, of course. So it's not official yet, but it's still official, right? Isn't it? But um, let's not talk about that too much. It's kind of making me a bit sad. Let's focus on Norwich nil, Liverpool 1. Liverpool 25 points ahead of Manchester City. Liverpool now 58 points ahead of Norwich City. This is simply ridiculous. And just because Liverpool are 25 points ahead of us, I'm going to wear 25 different jerseys in this video. Just for your entertainment. So leave the video a like. It's the least you can do. After winning two of their first four Premier League meetings with Liverpool, drawing one and losing one, Norwich are now winless in their last 13 games against them in the top flight, drawing two and losing 11. And you can add another loss to that one. Liverpool have won each of their last six Premier League away games against Norwich, scoring 20 goals in the process and at least twice each time but they only managed one today of the 359 fixtures to be played more than 10 times in the premier league norwich versus liverpool has the highest goals per game average 68 goals in 17 games which makes four per game but this match only had one. Norwich have lost 11 of their last 12 premier league games against sides starting the day top of the table with the only victory in that run coming against Manchester United in November 2012. A 1-0 win. And it had to be against United, right? Liverpool have opened the scoring in each of their last 13 Premier League meetings with Norwich in the history of the competition. Only Chelsea against Portsmouth with 14 have scored the first goal in more consecutive games versus an opponent. As we all know, Norwich came into this game bottom of the table on 18 points. As for Liverpool, they started the match top of the table on 73 points. So it was first versus last. For Norwich City, their German manager Daniel Falker used a 4-2-3-1 formation with Tim Krul in goal, Max Ahrens, Christoph Zimmermann, Grant Hanley the captain and Sam Byram in defense. Alex Tete, the longest serving player, Kenny McLaren, Lucas Rapp, Andre Duda, both who came in during the January transfer window, Todd Cantwell, one of the brightest players this season, and Timo Pukki, their top scorer. As for Liverpool, their German manager Jurgen Klopp used a 4-3-3 formation with Allison in goal, Robertson, Van Dijk, Gomez, Trent Alexander-Arnold at the back, captain Jordan Henderson, Naby Keita and Jeannie Wijnaldum in the midfield. Up top, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain started where Sadio Mane usually plays, Mohamed Salah and of course Roberto Firmino. Firmino. In windy conditions at Carroll Road in front of a stadium packed with passionate fans, Liverpool only made one change bringing in Naby Keita 
and their back line had the likes of Virgil van Dijk and Joe Gomez, who has now gone 11 matches conceding only one single goal. That's amazing, right? That is super. Norwich City looking destined for relegation have themselves to blame after basically not doing any business at all in the summer transfer window. Well, they did some business, but the players that they brought in wasn't gonna set the world on fire at all. You're talking about Dermich. Like, come on. You think you're gonna do anything with Dermich? Like, for real? Are you kidding me? So after a pretty okay start to the season where they actually beat my team, Manchester City, it all went downhill from there. Timo Pukki has been scoring a lot of goals. Todd Cantwell has looked good as well. Emiliano Buendia and a few other, you know, young players, Max Ahrens, Jamal Lewis and co. But all in all, Norwich has been poor and I think they have themselves to blame. The director of football, Daniel Farker, why didn't they bring in players during the summer? I don't know. They signed Lucas Rupp and Andre Duda during the winter transfer window. I don't know why, because these players aren't going to set the world on fire either, but they look destined for relegation. They, they have themselves to blame. As for Liverpool, they have been setting the world on fire. They are champions of the world, champions of Europe, and now look destined to be champions of England for the first time ever in three decades. Now, that's big. That's big. That's explosive. Poof. Poof. Because they have been awesome, man. With the teams coming back from winter break, we always knew that it was gonna be a slow start. And for the first 20 minutes of the game, there weren't really much action. Liverpool with most of the possession, Norwich soaking up the pressure very, very well. But both teams look kind of rusty coming back from their mid-season vacation. You could say they were kind of jet-lagged. Especially the Liverpool f who had all right to go out and party because what they've been doing they deserve to do so. They've actually been having a party all season, if you really think about it. All the dancing that Sadio Mane and Van Dyke and Firmino and co. has been doing on the field this season. It's been a big party. And I know you Liverpool fans have been dancing after winning all these games. You're talking about 25 wins out of 26 matches. Simply ridiculous. ridiculous. After managing the game quite well for the first 20 minutes, Norwich suffered their first setback in the 24th minute when their left back Sam Byron pulled a hammy. Could someone get a new hammy for Sam Byron, please? On came Jamal Lewis as the sub. He didn't have, he had an okay game. Let's just say that. He had an okay game. Ronald Koeman, the Dutch national team coach, was spotted in the stands. He was there taking a look at the likes of Jeannie Wijnaldum, Tim Krul, and Co. And he was just basically visiting the Premier League where he used to be the manager of Everton. It must have hurt him to be seeing the Reds play so well. He used to be the manager of Southampton too. Let's not forget that. But all eyes was on Jeannie Wijnaldum, Tim Krul, who was having a very, very, very good game up until that point. So it's fair to say that he impressed his manager and he will be getting one of those goalkeeping places at Euro 2020. He will be in the squad. They carry like three goalkeepers. So I think Tim Crew will be in the squad despite Norwich being bottom of the table. He has been good. Well, not that good. He hasn't been that bad. Let's just say that. Up until the half hour mark, Norwich was doing quite a good job to keep Liverpool scoreless. And their chance to punish the Reds came around the 36th minute when Duda was played in behind, which was, you know, marginally offside. Jurgen Klopp said that it would have been offside anyway, but the fact that he got in behind spelled trouble. Liverpool's high line kind of, you know, breach there. But... Duda made a meal of it anyway. Or maybe you could just say that Allison foiled it. 
Because when Duda tried to play in Pookie, Allison somehow turned into... I, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like he had elast <laughs> elastic arms and he stretched out and stopped the ball from getting to Pookie, who would have just tapped it in the back of the net. But VAR would have came into play and I'm pretty sure that it would have been offside, like marginally offside. But that was a great play by Norwich City there. But great save again by Allison though. Even though it would have been called offside by VAR, we don't even know that. They didn't, I don't think they, they give us the verdict. That was a big save. That was a great save. Allison has been amazing this season ever since coming back from injury. So you got to give props when props is due, man. Like I used to be kind of skeptical about Allison being the best goalkeeper in the Premier League and in the world, but man... He has risen. Nil-nil at halftime. Neither Liverpool nor Norwich looked sharp enough to score. And they looked pretty jet-lagged, to be honest. And to be fair, it's okay for the players to just come back after that vacation and get a feel for things. Norwich, no shots at goal. Liverpool, nine shots at goal. One on target. Should have scored at least one in the first half Liverpool but as usual at halftime I'm pretty sure that the German Jurgen Klopp give the boys a really good pep talk and they came back out a more spirited team in the second half they had a better idea of what they needed to do to break down this very resilient Norwich City team at home but as I said Liverpool did look like they were still on vacation in the first half but they were a total different team in the second. Seeing that Liverpool came into this match 42 games unbeaten, win, a draw, still good enough for them to go 43 matches without a loss. That's simply ridiculous. The last team to go 42 matches unbeaten was the Nottingham Forest team in 78-79. So next on the list is the Arsenal invincible team of the 03-04 season who has 49 straight matches without a single loss. Liverpool only needs six more. Let's talk a bit about the second half. Up until the 54th minute, the game was still scoreless, but Liverpool started to turn the screw. And they almost scored four minutes later when a Mo Salah shot was saved brilliantly by Tim Krul, rebounded into the path of Naby Keita, and his shot was saved at close range by Krul once again, who was putting on a really, really good display for his Dutch national team coach Ronald Koeman of course that's that's pretty much the only reason why he was acting like that because not like Norwich are gonna survive I heard the commentator saying that Daniel Farker thinks that Norwich could still survive like there's still a chance of a miracle there ain't no chance of no miracle Norwich are going down you had the summer window to buy players and you chose to renew contracts like, come on, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm really pissed off at this whole Norwich City thing. But still, the fans are happy that they're in the Premier League. And they don't look like they mind getting relegated, to be honest. At the 101 mark, it seems as if Jurgen Klopp was like, Listen, man, I'm fed up with Norwich. And I, I just need to kill this game off like now. Took off Oxley Chamberlain, Wijnaldum, brought on Fabino, and Sadio Mane. And that's that was a game changer right there. If you are looking for a game changer, if you are looking for a moment where the game turned, that was the moment. Those two substitutions. He didn't take off one player, he took off two. Fresh legs for being able to sit back in front of the defense. Henderson to push forward in a more creative role. Sadio Mane, fresh as ever, well rested, vacation, missed a few games, and the man can't do no wrong. The man cannot do no wrong. They continue to turn the screws. They continue to turn the screws. And it's like this team got screws loose because 
The way they've been playing is just insane. It's simply insane. And you, you gotta give them the praises that they deserve. Really, you have to give it to them. Don't get me wrong, Wijnaldum and Oxley chamberlain did their jobs, but it wasn't their day. It simply wasn't their day to shine. But you know whose day it was to shine? Sadio Mane. So, 60th minute, these two players came on. Liverpool continued to up the intensity. But Norwich looked dangerous. It was like end-to-end -end stuff between the 60th and around, let's say, the 75th minute. It was just Norwich, then Liverpool, Norwich, then Liverpool, and then Alex Tete hit the post. That was a really good shot. That was a really good shot. I think Allison got something on it as well, but that was a good shot. Allison was beaten, but he covered his near post very, very well. And let's just give him the benefit of the doubt and say, he covered his near post very well, but that was a good shot by Tete. Norwich was sending warning signs, but with them going forward, they were definitely going to leave themselves vulnerable at the back. They, they were having all sorts of trouble with Liverpool and set play situations and just the ball constantly going in the box, going in the box. And with a guy like Mane on the field, it was only going to get worse for Norwich. Defending Salah, Firmino, and Mane was going to prove to be a very, very difficult thing to do. The big moment came in the 78th minute. A brilliant ball in by Jordan Henderson. I was like, oh my goodness. Jeez, Henderson. No wonder people are saying you should win the PFA Player of the Season award because these passes and these you know, long balls have been ridiculous, man. The work you're doing in defense, yeah, defense, I said it, defense, because when everybody goes up, you know, Henderson stay back and he covers the dirty work, the leadership, the passion. It's just been immense. It's just been immense. And with every good team, you got to have a good leader. And Henderson has been a great leader. What a ball for Sadio Mane. And the way he took the ball down, even though he was challenged by Zimmerman, who, let's be all, let's let's be fair here, man. Zimmerman, you got to be stronger in a challenge like this. You're way taller than Sadio Mane, and you're getting pushed off the ball. You're getting pushed off the ball. You're getting bullied. Sadio Mane, get in that ball. Even though he was challenged by two Norwich City players bringing it down so nicely and smashing it past Tim Krul at his near post. Sadio Mane coming off the bench to great effect to score his 100th Premier League goal. I think 73 for Liverpool and 25 for Southampton. Awesome performance. And I think this is his first goal off the bench as well. Mane is a starter. He doesn't come off the bench very often. So... That's all Liverpool needed. Mane coming up with the goods, Henderson with the assists. With them going ahead, they, were, they, they definitely weren't going to relinquish that lead. They know how to manage games very, very well. That's why you call them mentality giants. At that point in time in the game, I was there at work and I'm saying to myself, damn, this Liverpool team are going to get 100 points. They're definitely going to go invincible this season because no team look like they're going to beat them. I was thinking about the plethora of records that they have broken already and the records they have set and the records they still have left to break. And I was like, damn. Damn. What a what team. team. With the two teams still grinding it out. Like, even though Liverpool scored, Norwich were definitely still in the game. 1-0 up. You know, Liverpool 1-0 up. Liverpool did not win the matches yet. Norwich was still in the game. And they could have scored. They could have scored if, 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 
if Liverpool had maybe a Jordan Pickford in goal. Because when Puki got played in behind Liverpool's high line again, Liverpool, you got to watch yourself with that high defensive line. I know Premier League teams haven't been beating you, but in Europe, you got to watch yourself with that high defensive line. If you could get guys like Puki getting behind, believe you me, believe you me, against better oppositions in Europe, you get punished. But Puki, really good shot off, but Allison there to stop it with ease. If it was Jordan Pickford, like how he got beaten against Crystal Palace the other day from a Christian Benteke shot. Yes, Christian Benteke beat him. Ball went straight through him like he was a ghost. If Jordan Pickford was in the goal, Norwich would have picked up a point from this game. But it was Allison in goal, not Jordan Pickford. And that is definitely kind of a, you know, something for you Liverpool fans, a, a jab at Everton too, so. <laughs> Liverpool held on for the win and they made it 17 wins in a row. 17 wins in a row, one behind the record that City has for 18 straight wins. I think that's the record, if I'm not mistaken. It's happened so long ago and so many things have happened, but this Liverpool team are on course to break more records. They've, they've simply been ridiculous. Not playing at their best. Like, we ain't gonna say that's their best. That's not top gear. That's definitely not top gear. The way they played in the first half, there was a... Uh, but the second half, they came out and they, they produced the goods. And that's the most important thing. At the end of the day, when you look at the score sheet, it's going to say 1-0 one, one to Liverpool. They ain't going to say nothing, no notes that Liverpool was okay in the first half. And then in the second half, they kicked. No. All that matters, they, they scored one. Norwich didn't score any. They got three points. They move up to 76 points. More points than they got two seasons ago. In the entire Premier League season. It's simply ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Seriously. 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 It's 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 <sighs> if you think this Liverpool team ain't gonna go invincible this season, I don't know, man. I don't know. You need to you need to have more belief in your team. They hard to beat. Seriously. They definitely Hard to kill. As for stats in the game, Norwich City had five shots at goal, one on target, 36% of the possession, 368 passes with a 72 pass accuracy. They committed five. They committed five fouls, picked up one yellow, one offside, two corners. Stats don't look too good at all. Stats definitely don't look too good it, it, it don't look like Norwich was like roughing up Liverpool or trying to get the ball back or maybe look listen man it's Liverpool you're playing I've seen games this season where teams have similar stats like this and destroy Man City I, I cannot make this thing up I'm not even trying to make us look bad we have just been subpar in comparison to Liverpool this season. And it, 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 it kind of, it, it, it breaks my heart, seriously. Five shots, one on target. If this was City, it would have been five shots, one on target, one goal. Or two goals. And we would have had Liverpool stats, which I'm going to get into right now. 17 shots at goal for Liverpool. Six on target, one in the back of the net. 64% possession. 620 passes with an 83% pass accuracy. Could have passed the ball a bit better. 11 fouls, which shows that Liverpool were trying to get the ball back. They were pressing Norwich hard to get the ball back. Two yellows, seven corners. The set pieces, the set pieces. Very, very dangerous team in set, set play situations. I think Liverpool are the best team in terms of scoring from set plays this season last season the team has just been magnificent, magnificent. 
In terms of post-match insights, Liverpool have now won 17 Premier League games in a row, matching their best ever winning streak in league football. Last set between March and October 2019, where they came just short of the record. Just one shy of Manchester City's all-time English top flight record of 18 wins in a row between August and December 2017. This record is gonna get beaten. It's gonna get smashed and a better record is gonna get set. Liverpool have opened the scoring in each of their last 14 Premier League meetings with Norwich. No side has ever scored the opening goal in more consecutive games versus another in the competition's history. Chelsea also 14 versus Portsmouth. Wow, that's a good stat. Guys, you remember Luis Suarez, right? And for the last insight, Norwich have only won one of their last 13 Premier League matches, drawing five, losing seven, and have failed to score in back-to-back -back league matches for the first time since November of 2019. Norwich have been poor. Let's just put it out there, they have been poor. They have been poor, they're at the bottom of the table, but yet they defeated, they defeated us this season. Simply, come on. It's a weird season. It's a weird season. If, look, look, even Jurgen Klopp can't even believe what is going on. Believe me. I saw his interview and he's like, it's weird. It's unbelievable. I don't know how it's, I, I really don't know how it's happening, but it's happening. It is happening. But well played again, Liverpool. Well played again. Round of applause to the Reds on picking up yet another victory this season. In terms of schedule for Norwich their next match comes on the road against Wolverhampton Wanderers that won't be an easy fixture at all that is Sunday the 23rd of February then five days later they host Leicester City at home that won't be easy either then they're still in the FA Cup where they play Tottenham in the fifth round then they have Sheffield United Southampton Everton some easier fixtures Arsenal, Brighton, Watford, West Ham, Chelsea, Bur they have some easier fixtures and they will finish off the season playing Manchester City where who knows, they probably will pick up another win. You never know. But they're not out of it yet. They're not out of it completely, but it, it ain't looking good for Norwich City at all at the bottom of the table for quite some time. Guys, let me know your thoughts. Let me know who you think will be relegated at the end of the season. As for Liverpool, their next match will be in the UEFA Champions League round of 16 first leg against Atletico de Madrid in the stadium where they won the sixth Champions League title after defeating Tottenham Hotspur. So that's a big clash that's coming this Tuesday. I got to do a, a little prediction for that. Probably do it tomorrow. The day is done. The day is done right now. As we speak, Saturday, it's done. So I have to do this Sunday, February the 16th. So they play Atletico Madrid. Then they play West Ham United at Anfield. Then Watford at Vicarage Road. And then they face Chelsea at Stamford Bridge in the fifth round of the FA Cup. Well, you know, we're going to see the kids involved again. A mixture of the kids and the first team, I hope, because this is a big game. I would like to see the two teams go all guns blazing. After that, well, four days after that, well, wait, wait, no, no, no. Four days after that, yes, they host Bournemouth, and then four days after that, they will play Atletico Madrid in the second leg of the Champions League round of 16. So... The fact that they play Watford and Bournemouth mm, in between the FA Cup match, I, I think they, they will play a strong team. They will play a strong team. Then they play Everton in the Merseyside derby, Crystal Palace at Anfield. And by then, they should mathematically wrap up the league. Seriously. April 4th, Manchester City at the Etihad. That's going to be a big stinking game. I was talking up the first match, we got smashed, and let's see how we respond. Let's see how we respond. 
Aston Villa, Brighton, Burnley, Arsenal, Chelsea, and the final game will be against Newcastle, where they will definitely lift the Premier League title and celebrate like it's 1999. So guys, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who has gotten to the end of this video. I just came up with the concept while I was at work. The fact that we are 25 points behind Liverpool is simply ridiculous. We play West Ham this Wednesday in a rescheduled match. And I don't know why the match is playing on Wednesday when there's a Champions League match on that day. I want to watch Champions League football. I don't want to be watching Premier League matches on Wednesday. I don't want to, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I want to watch my team play, but that day was designated for Champions League football, not to be scrambling, watching Premier League matches, and then while the match is almost done, watching the Champions League game at the same time. That was not supposed to be the case. But I hope we pick up a victory against West Ham. We need that victory to lift our spirits after receiving that two-year Champions League ban, which, you know, we, we are going to appeal, of course, and we're going to hope for the best. And I know a lot of you guys are saying all sorts of things or whatnot, but you could say what you want. I'm just hoping for the best and for, for us to learn a lesson and just, you know, focus. We need to focus on playing great football and not focus on things that happened four years ago before Pep's era began. So, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you're new around here, please consider hitting the subscribe button. The road to 40K is in full effect, man. I don't really focus too much on the sub count, but subscribe anyways. Visit cardsplug.com slash DominicRichFC to get yourself one of these lovely cards. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. Share this wherever you can. Tell a friend about the channel. And until my next video, peace out. Rich. Squad. This is actually 24 jerseys though. I think I need one more to make it 25. What an epic. <laughs> it's only for entertainment purposes, okay? Only for entertainment purposes. And that's the beauty about doing YouTube. Gotta be entertaining. Gotta be entertaining. You guys know I'm the real deal. I don't need to prove nothing to anybody. You know I'm the real deal. But guys, until my next video, peace out. All right? Appreciate it. Appreciate the love and the support. And I do appreciate the non-support and the non-love as well. Later. Guys, make sure you head on over to cardsplug.com slash DominicRichFC. To get yourself one of these lovely cards for your wall, it makes for a great 